Good afternoon and greetings from Farmer Bill. Bill back in the fun are at Maze Valley Farm Market and Winery and we're doing a corn maze update here as we're walking around the kids maze portion of the maze. This is the outer loop of the Circle MV that we have in here for the littler kids to come on out so they don't get involved in the great big eight acre maze. Our mazes aren't as big as some. They're on the on the average size there with the eight acre identity. We used to do them bigger but uh, we just don't need to. A bigger maze than that just really isn't necessary to meet our marketing goals as we're going along. We're in the final stages of preparation here. We'll be opening in about two weeks. Some of this corn looks better than others as I've been kind of chronicling as we've gone along. Like most of our crops this year, we just hit a spell there in the middle of the year. Things started out real good. This uh, planting conditions were perfect for this field and as, as the time went along it just it just went away from us uh, in a big way. And what we ended up facing was a situation where uh, we got it in the ground, great conditions to get it into the ground. It came up really, really nice. Things were looking super. And then all of a sudden, we ran into a period of about five to six weeks where we had nothing but a lot of cloud cover. Really cool temperatures for uh, June, July, and first part of August. And... Um, not even uh, a lot of rainfall. So we were like a arid, cool desert. And uh, it, the, the plants just didn't like it. We had no heat units or anything going on out there. So we had uh, kind of saturated soils, cool temperatures, right when the plant was getting the roots under the ground, it's under its feet, and it just never really snapped out of it from there on out. And now later on, we got rain finally. The ground got a little bit of, uh, of moisture in it. It was kind of lacking toward the latter part of that and some heat, but till then the plant had gone through enough time period that it physiologically it was timing out. It's tasseling, it's making the air, and it says, I'm not gonna get much bigger around, and I'm not gonna get much taller. That's okay, we've gone with Hugh McPherson of Maze Quest this year, and we're gonna rack it up anyhow, and what we've been coming along and doing the last few days here is putting in our game stations. In this part of the kids' maze along here will be the Finger Fortune games and some of those cool things for the little ones to do. We have a small portion here that they'll be coming along and uh, getting collecting the little different colors for their fingers, and they go on out there and they match it to the chart and they oink like a like a pig or moo like a cow or make different sounds. And I can talk a little bit more about some of the other stuff that we have in the maze as we're going along, including text message games and trivia answer games, this year particularly about the Civil War. And um, what else? We got the rub stations in there and uh, the word find. So there's a lot to do in a, in a maze quest maze. So it isn't just wandering around being lost in the cornfield. It's an engaging activity designed to keep the whole family involved with a challenge. And this challenge is probably in this case going to take you about an hour to an hour and a half. A little bit about the corn and corn physiology. We're talking as we're walking along here. As I mentioned, corn makes a decision pretty much how big it's going to be. By the time it's all about Oh, five, six, eight inches tall. Until it, by the time it's that big, it's already decided how big around the ear is going to be, how many rows of kernels are going to be on there, and what it's going to, what it ultimately is going to end up yielding. And that all happens real early. And so what you, what I found, <laughs> this is just a farmer's perspective, and maybe there's some uh, science to back this up, is if our corn goes through a, a stress period early, it's good because it, sends a, it tends to send out a root system looking for water and it gets a good uh, stabilization under its, under its uh, subsoil profile there, really seeks out roots, uh, seeks out moisture, seeks out nutrients, and it makes a good and healthy, strong plant. Exact same opposite thing happened to ours. We had really good soil conditions when it went in and then later as the season progressed, it got wet right when it was going through this decision period. It was drowning in water. It didn't put out a lot of roots. And when it got dry later, it didn't have the uh, root system to support it, and it struggled along. But what we have here is an interesting mutation. And that's what all this stuff is about, is mutations. That's how everything's gotten here. And if you look at this, you'll see that we have a ear up where the tassel should be. What the heck is that all about? Well, what you're looking at there is a throwback. There's a gene in there that's going to, like, way back in the day. And what I'm saying is... 10,000 years ago when we domesticated corn. That's right. It wasn't like as a wildebeest or something. We went and ran it down and grabbed a hold of it and domesticated it like a cat, a dog, or a wild animal. It was a wild plant. And somebody came along and said, hey, I'm really hungry, like we were back in the hunter-gathering days. And pretty much if it, if it didn't, if it was a, a alive and it didn't move, you could kill it, you ate it. Or if it was a plant and you could eat it, you ate it. 
Well, somebody came along and found corn. And it was just quite a bit looking like this, I suspect. I learned this when I was down in Mexico. But it grew on the top of the stalk, not on the side. Here's a great example, side top. And I think I talked a little bit about this in our sweet corn video. But what we have here is, this is what it was. And, and the people came along and they said, oh, that's really good, I can eat that. I can survive. We're not talking about the luxuries of Xbox and, and uh, bling and uh, that kind of stuff. They're looking to survive right about now. So they came along and they said, I can eat that. And they saved some seeds and they planted it. And over time, as the plant with the different genetic material made up at it, I'm talking time, I'm talking thousands and thousands of years, we bred the plant and bred the plant through selective breeding that we moved it down to a side ear. And then we can uh, later on talk about fixed ear positioning, left, right, and things like that. But there's just something I found just walking through the corn maze. Quick tutorial. There it is, back in the day, genes popping up. Cool stuff. Once again, this is Bill Backen, the fun czar from Mays Valley Farm Market and Winery saying thank you for stopping by and come visit the Civil War Corn Maze. Take care.